Yeah, hello? Carl, it's Evan from For the Life of the World. Hey, what's up, Evan? No, no, hold on. What's up with you? It's uh, just another, another beautiful day in Williamsport. Nice. Well, <laughs> hey, I, I wanted to call you because I got your coffee in the mail, and I was blown away. Well, thank you for it. You're welcome. Uh, uh, but I was blown away by how beautiful everything was in this package. Like, I just expected, you know, just a bag of coffee, and you sent, like, three bags of coffee in beautiful containers and beautiful packaging with like even the stuff around the package was beautiful there was a sticker there was like explanations of the coffee and where it's from it was just it was an amazing like box that when i opened it i I almost got weepy because i was like he cares about me through sending me this coffee and i can feel it and so I was like, I got to call you. I got to find out about you, what you're doing, and about your coffee shop. Yeah. So I, I own uh, Alabaster Coffee Roaster and Tea Company. Um, it's a, a coffee shop and a roastery. We're right in the downtown of, of our city, Williamsport. Most folks, if they've heard of Williamsport, it's likely because we're the home of Little League Baseball. We're, we're also the home of ShopVac. I'm really excited about that one, too. So much about our shop is the experience that somebody has here. Again, beyond like beyond just your drink, um, the atmosphere, our staff, all of those things. Uh, we want you to feel special um, and not to sound cheesy, but like you are. Um, and we want you to, to feel kind of bought into to what we're doing. You know, really that whole kind of unboxing uh, that you went through. Like, we want, we want you to have the same experience of excitement when you open that uh, when you open that package as when you walk through the doors of our shop. Well, mission accomplished. Um, <laughs> how long have you guys been in business? So I've been in biz. I've been in business for a little over five years. Uh, before that, I was in full time vocational ministry. Which uh, I think for a lot of folks, that's almost backwards sometimes. I know I speak to a number of folks who go from uh, kind of secular marketplace you know, careers, if you will, and then kind of move into vocational ministry as a second career. Right. Um, and, so, and so I'm, you know, I've, I've been that opposite. Yeah, so I, I, I've already kind of view my life as how are we, how are we bringing the gospel to the community but now in many ways uh, not being a vocational pastor and being in the marketplace uh, there are definitely aspects of that I feel like it gives me a a broader platform and in a lot of ways that's honestly like that, that's that's scary it's scary because from a, from a business perspective I you know I want to I absolutely want to be true to I want to be true to my faith. I want to be true to, to Christ um, and certainly not hide anything about who I am, um, but also trying to understand how to best contextualize that to people around me who might not share those same worldviews or viewpoints. It was important for me that while we would have a very close relationship with the church, I didn't want the shop to live under a a Christian subculture. Because I think culturally, at least for us, there's a feeling that if something that has a Christian adjective to it, it's very often seen as just a kind of slightly neutered version of what's popular in mainstream culture. You won't see crosses, you won't see scripture on the wall. I don't push an overly spiritual agenda on anything because I don't want it to become the Christian ghetto. I'm, I'm here to reach the city. And if that means we do a little extra to try to not build that wall, then like then that's, that's some of the work that we're going to do. Well, that's really shift my focus now. I also realized that just as much as I view the city 
as my ministry. I view my staff as my ministry, too. I mean, they're the folks that I spend just about every day with. And I have such a great opportunity to share and spend my life with them. I'm, I'm learning, honestly, I'm learning how to interact with people that are much different from me. I've never grown up in church, but I'm mostly Christian friends. You know, I think it, it can be difficult to reach different people because certainly I'm naturally going to gravitate and have good relationships with certain demographics of people, and I'm going to miss others. And and you get lots of comments of, I don't know how to witness to my coworkers. I don't know how to share the gospel with these people. I don't know how to do these things. And I, I feel like the, the growing feeling that I got the more and more I heard this was, I don't know if we need to spend as much time trying to figure out like the, the how to do it as just living the gospel. And it's really like we because we know the work to do that we've then done it. How we do our work, how it's accomplished, the attitudes that we have to it is very much an act of worship. It's not a game the ability to work and the means to work. The way that I do that should absolutely be joyful and worshipful. And you know, what we're learning so much with that transformational piece, if, if we show up, the Holy Spirit will move. Like we just, we need to be there. Carl, it's been awesome getting to know you and uh, I just thank you for what you're doing and I'm grateful for it and humbled by it and thank you for taking the time to chat with me today too. Absolutely, you're, you're very welcome, it's a pleasure.